Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do chapter 9 from MCB. The name of the chapter is The Other Side of Scientists. But before I start, please subscribe to my channel for more such videos every week. We usually know scientists to be men of learning. They are intelligent and they are always uh, engrossed in researches and experiments. They don't have time for humor. They are always serious. Here in this chapter, we are going to know a different side of the scientists' characters. We will know that even scientists have this sense of humor. First incident, Euclid's road to geometry. Euclid is one of the famous Greek mathematician. One day, Ptolemy, the king of Alexandria, asked Euclid that is there any shorter way of learning geometry because his method is very tough. Listening to this, Euclid replied that there are two kinds of roads. So one hard road for the common people and the easy road for the royal family. But when you are learning geometry, all roads are the same. There is no hard road or easy road to learning. Next, Darwin names a bug. Here we are going to talk about Charles Darwin, who was a naturalist in the 19th century. One day he went to visit a friend. So two boys of the family, they thought of playing prank on Charles Darwin. So what they did was, they glued together various parts of insects like butterfly, centipede, beetle, grasshopper. Sticking all together, he made a very horrible looking insect. So the two boys went to Darwin, hoping for an answer. They told Darwin that can you tell me what kind of bug it is? But Darwin was not to be fooled. Darwin looked at it and understood what the case was. So he decided to play back. He asked the boys, Did you notice whether it hummed when you caught it, boys? The boys instantly replied yes. So Darwin said, Then, since it was humming, so it's a humbug. And the boys left. Next, Pasture's Wedding Day. So here we are going to talk about Louis Pasteur, one of the famous French chemists. So it was his wedding day and he was nowhere to be found. The bride and her family got very nervous as the groom had not arrived yet. So a friend of Pasteur went to the laboratory to see where, where is Pasteur and saw Pasteur busy with an experiment. So when asked about forgetting his own wedding, Pasteur replied, Oh no, but do you expect me to quit in the middle of an experiment? Pasteur was so engrossed in his experiment that he forgot to attend his own wedding. Next, the arithmetic class. The story starts with a little schoolgirl who is having some difficulty in mathematics. He got to know from his mother that a famous mathematician was, has come to stay in their neighborhood. He was, a, also, he was also a very helpful man. So she thought of going for help. So she went there and the old man had explained everything patiently. After that, when she went back home, she told her mother that she found it much more easier than what her teacher taught in school. Her mother got shocked and uh, actually the mathematician was none other than the famous mathematician Albert Einstein. So she immediately went to him and apologized. But Einstein said, You don't have to apologize. I've certainly learned more from the conversation with the child than she did from me. Scientists are so busy with their experiments that they forget fun and good talks. 
which the child had given to him so he did not have any complaint next the humane scientist so this is a story about sir isaac newton he was one of the famous english physicist and mathematician the one who discovered gravity so he was once compiling the notes on all the research he had conducted over the course of 20 years so when he was doing that his dog diamond slept nearby him so newton was working all day so when it was night he lit a few candles and continued his work suddenly he heard a knock so he closed the door and went to answer it at the meantime diamond woke up and started panicking because he could not see his master and he collided against newton's study table and all the candles on the table fell when newton came in the room he saw that all his notes were reduced to ashes there was nothing left of the of his notes which he made for 20 years but he simply stroked diamond's head and said oh diamond diamond thou little knowest the mischief thou hast done it means diamond you don't even know what your mischief has caused me next Fleming's thoughts at breakfast. Once Sir Alexander Fleming went to New York. So as he was about to have his breakfast, two journalists came to him and asked him, "So what sir, what are you thinking right now? We wish to know what a great scientist thinks while getting ready for breakfast." So Fleming thought for a while and replied, I'm thinking of something very special and the journalists got more excited and they were all ears to hear what he was about to say but flaming replied I'm thinking whether to have one egg or two the journalists thought that flaming was going to reply something scientific but instead he replied on what he was going to have on his breakfast next the boy genius in a small school in south india a maths teacher was teaching the 8th standard and he explained the class that that any number divided by the same number becomes 1 suddenly a student got up and asked sir is that true of 0 to the master was shocked the boy was very intelligent to ask such a question so he grew up to be a mathematical genius the name of the indian mathematical genius was srinivasa ramanujan so this is all about the chapter can you tell me what would you do if you would be in sir isaac newton's place and your 20 years of research would be reduced to ashes Do let me know in the comments below. Till then, thank you.